Deciding which GPU to buy for local AI is really hard. There's AMD, Intel, Nvidia, and they all tell you they have GPUs that are great for AI. And if you're willing to dig a little bit deeper, you'll find that they are older, maybe server grade GPUs that are really inexpensive that you might even see build logs for. And the issue is it's hard to know if these are actually great or basically just e-waste someone's telling you is great for local AI, so you buy it anyway. Wherever you look on the internet, especially YouTube, you'll see videos that are telling you what GPUs you should buy. And today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to tell you the GPUs that you definitely should not buy. GPUs that even companies like Nvidia will tell you are the latest and greatest or that are actually quite a good deal when in reality they're the last thing you should spend your money on and they're just better options around. Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So I first encountered this problem when I wanted to upgrade my gaming PC to be able to run Stable Diffusion. It was 2023 and there was even less information out there uh, than today about doing this. So I ended up buying an RTX A5000, which happened to be a huge waste of money. It was a great GPU, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't really what I needed. And it was actually one of the first things that inspired me to build Llama Builds. I'm not gonna talk about this too much, but it is a side project I just launched. And the whole idea is this presents you with builds that you actually should use for local AI. They're proven up. They're from some of the best sources on the internet and it should prevent hours of scrolling on local llama or other forums on the internet to know what is a good option. So definitely check out llama builds after this video once I tell you what you shouldn't buy. So let's get into what you definitely shouldn't buy. So there's been a lot of interest on local llama lately with Intel GPUs. Uh, Intel has, after some restructuring, put a lot of effort into making GPUs that are good for gaming and sort of good for AI. The AI front has really been writing a lot of software to bolt on the capability for PyTorch and a lot of other underlying software that powers LLMs to work on Intel GPUs. However, they're still really slow. They have about they have half the bandwidth of the RTX 3000 series on the low end, and things just kind of got really interesting with the uh, investment of Nvidia into Intel. Now, this is great for server markets. This is great for probably gamers. What this really means though is that Intel's going to really stop trying to make GPUs that directly compete with Nvidia. That's clearly what most of this is about. It was cool to see them get close. Their really small power efficient GPUs are pretty cool, but I would say for now, your money is just better spent elsewhere, even if it's buying a 3060 12 gig or lower end 4000 series GPUs like the 4060 Ti 16 gig. Intel is cool. They've really given it a great shot, but I would not invest in uh, certainly a multi GPU rig using Intel GPUs. So the next GPU I want to talk about is actually one from Nvidia. So this GPU is the NVIDIA 5050. And they really want you to think this is just a slightly lesser GPU than the 5060 Ti. It comes in some cool form factors. And what I want to tell you is this is one of the worst GPUs that NVIDIA has concocted probably in the last five years. So these are basically GPUs that are binned and they have no way of selling otherwise. And what's really curious about this is they actually gave this card an AI TOPS rating and they were willing to compare it to the RTX 3050. This is really proven up with how hilariously low the AI TOPS is. It only has eight gigs of VRAM, which is not even nearly enough for local AI in this day and age, even with smaller models like Magist Roll 1.2, Getting so much better and providing so much more capability with less VRAM. The biggest thing again that I believe is the most important thing with any GPU regardless of how fast it is is the memory bandwidth and this is the exact same reason why I don't recommend buying Intel GPUs for AI and it's this hilariously slow uh, 320 gigabytes per second of bandwidth and if you were to compare this to even the 3060 12 gig, not even the 3060 Ti, that has nearly twice the bandwidth. And that was considered the low end almost five years ago. So what's crazy is uh, Nvidia is telling people, oh yeah, you should buy this, you know, it'll fit in everything. You don't actually need a power cable. It's sort of aimed at like the lower, low end of the gaming market. And frankly, even if you're playing games, please don't buy this GPU, but especially don't buy it for local AI. I've also seen this come up in YouTube in ads, like suggested topics, and I definitely recommend not buying this for local AI. Now, the next class of GPU is kind of interesting. I've talked a lot about modded GPUs on this channel from China, and it's been pretty cool to see a lot of those start showing up 
from China. And another interesting variant of this is what came before the modded 4090s, which was the modded version of the 2080 Ti with 22 gigs of VRAM. You would think this GPU was actually a pretty good option. The reason being is that this GPU has First off, 22 gigs of VRAM, that's relatively fast, and it actually has more bandwidth than the 3060s. So you're getting into like the five to 600 gigabytes per second bandwidth window, which is pretty good for most anything you're gonna do with local AI on an NVIDIA GPU. Now, why shouldn't you buy this GPU? So the reason I wouldn't is these are getting harder and harder to find, especially with the advent of China of telling everyone in China to no longer buy NVIDIA GPUs explicitly for use in AI. Also, they're just less numerous. It's getting harder to get the precursors. The 2080 Ti is very, very old. We're talking like 2018 old. And the problem is this was the first wave of these modded GPUs, so they weren't very reliable. Yeah, 22 gigs was pretty great back in the day, but if you can't really find these and they're not reliable and you're getting them probably as the third or fourth owner, you really have to wonder if paying $300 for these is really that great of a deal, especially when you can spend even less money on an RTX 3060 12 gig for probably less than $200 if you submit decent offer to some of these sellers on eBay. And I'll put some listings below for you guys to look at. So the 3060, in my opinion, is just a far better option. And yeah, I wouldn't buy the 2080 Ti. The 3060 is also more popular than ever because of all the Ethereum rigs that are now being decommissioned. And uh, it's great because there have never been more of these in the market. I don't know why it took so long for these GPU miners to understand that GPU mining kind of stopped being a thing three years ago. But it's great if you want to run local AI, whether it's one 3060 or all the way up to six. That's what I've seen on Reddit at least for some of the more adventurous builds. And here's a pretty cool example of someone who has four of these 3060 12 gigs together with risers. And this is actually a pretty solid rig. You can run Magistral on this. You can run a lot of the uh, GPT open source models on this. And it's a great starting point. What's also cool is you don't have to spend too much money on these and you can slowly add them to a machine and then use VLLM as an inference platform. Now, the reason that I mention the M40 is there's still a lot of bad, almost fake build logs on Twitter and a lot of other popular PC building forums that try to claim this is a great option for a quote, local AI build. And the real answer in today's age in 2025 is this is not a great deal. One, these GPUs are starting to age out of support for even the most basic core software in a lot of uh, NVIDIA AI inference stacks. So driver support really isn't quite there anymore. The V100 is also kind of teetering on the edge. And the other thing is these were once a great deal before anyone knew about them, but now everyone knows about them. They're far less numerous and they're about four times as expensive as they were two to three years ago when they were discovered. Uh, and also to mention that in this day and age, these are really too slow to even have a usable number of tokens per second to use them in a way that feels like you should even be doing it. So this is a great example of what would appear to be a solid build somewhere else on the internet, you know, not mamabuilds.ai. The M40, you should just not buy. You should definitely wait another few weeks, save up some money and get something like a 3060 12 gig. That's gonna be a recurring theme in a lot of this video. So the other thing is these cards don't have any coolers. And what's crazy is there's someone trying to sell this for $153, which is wild. Now, the reason people get confused by these is they see, oh, 24 gigs of VRAM, that's crazy. And it's only $100, I should buy that. But the problem is, um, and this is a similar problem in the Tesla M60, is that a lot of these actually have two GPUs or there's a GPU split with an NVENC coprocessor that shares that VRAM. And a lot of times all that VRAM isn't actually allocated all to the GPU. There are some weird ways to get around it where in theory you can sort of push more of it towards the GPU, but you're never gonna see a full 24 gigs coming from an M40. And the other thing is that PCIe 3.0 by 16 is really slow, not even mentioning how slow these GPUs are, which is, pretty impressive, but not in a good way. The next one that is actually pretty popular is the P40. So this is another kind of server GPU that was really popular for a while to use in conjunction with other GPUs, 
on VLLM because you could have you know some faster GPUs that are doing more of the processing and then in theory you could have one of these cards with more VRAM that would store a certain portion of the compute. A lot of these inference engines don't really work like that but that's why these were popular on forums. Now the thing is yes you're getting a lot of VRAM sort of but uh, this isn't going to be treated by VLLM or an inference stack any differently than a 3060 12 gig and these are pretty expensive they don't have coolers and they were really popular two years ago but now we're getting to a point especially with four bit quantizations where a lot of these just don't make a lot of sense yes you can buy them on ebay but i'm going to put this in the e-waste tier of my ranking of all these gpus now one that's right on the edge that i might get some flack for mentioning that you shouldn't buy is the p100 now this is another gpu that was really popular because of how cheap it was for 16 gigs of VRAM. And this is actually a GPU that has aged out of driver support from NVIDIA for even CUDA officially. So I'm going to say you should definitely not buy this GPU. If you have a rig that uses these, that's great. I'm still going to shill the uh, 3060 12 gig, even in its old age. You can find some incredible deals from decommissioned Ethereum rigs. And I honestly think they're pretty cool. But yeah, so I think we should really be past the days of modifying coolers and doing all this stuff just to get more VRAM. In our modern age, there's just more speed available and there's more capability with how we know to deploy models now more so than we did three years ago. The other thing that's going to be really interesting, and frankly, it's a reason to not buy really ancient hardware like this, is um, you know nowadays you only hear about more and more of these massive AI data centers being built. And as expensive as it is, and as much you know rural water uh, in Tennessee it's using that towns should be able to use, it means that soon we will see probably one of the biggest waves of cheap AI inference NVIDIA hardware flooding secondhand markets than we've ever seen before. There has been more hardware of that kind sold now than there ever has been in history. And I think probably in six to eight months, we'll see all that happen. And the other thing is when that happens, all of this stuff will get even cheaper. Hopefully, if we uh, say the right seance in front of the NVIDIA GPU gods, we might even see something like an A140 gig dip below $400. That would be, I think, pretty cool. If you want to see kind of my thought on older NVIDIA hardware or modded GPUs, let me know below. Again, this is a huge motivation for why I built LlamaBuilds.ai. If you have a build you want me to feature on here, let me know. I have uh, PewDiePie's latest hacked together six GPU rig. Let me know if you think uh, he did something right or wrong. So I wanted to make this video just to make sure that you guys aren't out there buying hardware that I think isn't very performant or just kind of getting bad advice on what you should use in a build. Um, look down below for some solid links to where to find more information about this and maybe some good GPU deals as well. So as always, I hope you learned something from this video. I'm uh, probably gonna have more time to make videos more regularly. So I look forward to that. It's always great speaking with you all and I'll see you in the next one.